The 6 o'clock news starts right now. And we begin with late breaking news concerning the proposed new voting maps in Texas. A minority rights group filing a federal lawsuit against the state saying that those maps thwart the political strength of the Lone Star State's booming Latino population. The maps, which have not been given final passage, would sort 30 million people into new political districts. In the last decade, Texas added almost 4 million new residents. More than half of those new Texans are Latinos. Governor Greg Abbott expected to sign off on the new maps, which have to reach his desk by Tuesday. A criminal investigation now underway in Comal County after a Smithson Valley High School student is beaten and hospitalized following an attack right outside the school's front door. As our John Paul Barajas tells us, the student's parents upset with the district, saying no one tried to stop that attack. We want to warn you, some of the images you're about to see are disturbing. <laughs> the video is only four seconds long, but you don't need to see much of it to see how hard 15-year-old Andy Scott is being hit. The altercation took place on the front steps of Smithson Valley High School while students waited to be picked up on September 20th. The violence and the way that he's hitting, it makes you sick. Had somebody been at that front door, had somebody been watching over these kids, None at least maybe half the time he wouldn't have gotten beaten that for such a long time. This is what Andy looked like after the fight. According to a witness statement from the Kamau County Sheriff's Office, he suffered a concussion, internal swelling in the rib area, and a fracture to the face per medical records. Andy has special needs, according to his parents, Betty and Paul Scott. They claim there was no adult supervision or this could have been avoided. Now they want proper punishment and the other student removed from the campus. The Scots add they even sent a letter from a therapist stating Andy exhibited signs of trauma, not being able to maintain eye contact, staring at the floor for the entire 60 minute session and going on to say, it is my professional recommendations to physically and permanently remove any individuals who have been involved in Andy's brutal beating. And then the mornings are, oh, well, I really don't want to go work the school today. That's what he says. I says, Dad, I really don't want to go. I feel like, you know, I got to walk through that front door. Every day he sees that front of the school, so it reminds him. We reached out to Kamal ISD. They acknowledged there was an altercation on September 20th and state appropriate disciplinary measures have been taken. We have sent follow-up questions, but haven't heard back. Andy is currently only attending school in half days. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Hard to watch that video. The Scots did file a report with the Comal County Sheriff's Office. They tell us the video of that fight is in the hands of the district attorney. They're waiting to see if charges will be handed down. New information in connection with a deadly shooting at a downtown gas station. We now know the name of the man who was killed. 35-year-old William Darrell Hawkins was shot and killed in the parking lot of the downtown food store Thursday morning. According to police, Hawkins was shot after an altercation with another man. After that shooting, police say the man who pulled the trigger drove around the block and waited for police. He told officers he felt threatened and used his gun in self-defense. No charges yet in this investigation. Early voting now underway for the upcoming November elections. Eight state constitutional amendments are on the ballot, and there are a number of school bonds and municipal races in the area. On top of that, voters in District 118 will decide who will finish the term of former state rep Leo Pacheco, Republican John Lujan, or Democrat Frank Daniels. Early voting runs through October 29th. Election Day is the following day, November 2nd. You can take a closer look at what's on the ballot and see the sample ballot on ksat.com. This year's ballot will have eight proposed constitutional amendments on it. Of those, Props 4 and 5 have to do with our judicial system. Erica Hernandez gives us an explanation of what they mean and what changes they could bring. Requirements for being a judge in Texas could soon become stricter. Proposition 4, if passed, would double the mandatory years of experience from the current four to a minimum of eight for district judges and five to ten years for judges who sit on the Supreme Court and the Criminal Court of Appeals of Texas. These are just some concerns that at five years of practicing, it's not enough to have the, the necessary judicial uh, temperament uh, to, to take over some very important cases. Other change requirements would include having to be a Texas resident and an attorney with a license to practice law in Texas. 
If the measure does pass, the new rules could apply to appointed or elected officials who assume their role after January 1st, 2025. I think it's it, you can assume that people with more years of experience are going to be better qualified, but not always. As for Proposition 5, if passed, it would give the State Commission on Judicial Conduct the ability to discipline judicial candidates the same way they would those already on the bench. Right now, as a judge, when you're campaigning, there's not very much you can have an opinion about. That's, that's for a good reason, because judges are supposed to be independent. Whether these were Republican or Democratic-led propositions, this is one of the few times both sides agreed. Both these bills were almost unanimously supported in both houses. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. The Republican National Committee working to attract more Hispanic voters and they've created a new Hispanic Community Center on the southeast side. Organizers behind the new RNC Hispanic Community Center on Pecan Valley Drive say the goal here is to connect with local voters. It's where Republican leaders will register voters. They'll host movie nights, faith nights, block walks all with the common theme of supporting Bear County's Republican Party. A spokesperson for the RNC says they chose this side of town due to its predominantly Hispanic population. John Taylor, who you just saw, a professor of political science at UTSA, says the Hispanic vote is incredibly important. He says since 2014, Bear County has been trending Democratic amongst Hispanic voters. This is a Republican attempt and not just to try to to attract Hispanic voters, but a larger issue, which is to try to to at least clamp down on Democratic gains and expansion um, within within not just San Antonio and Bear County, but within South Texas. And this is the third RNC Hispanic Community Center in South Texas. Other locations are in Laredo and McAllen. New at six, they are two things you wouldn't expect to intersect ballet and sex trafficking. A ballet company out of Chicago bringing its unique performance here to San Antonio, where one of their dancers was born and raised. She tells Courtney Friedman the importance of artists using their voices for social justice. A few years ago, San Antonio teenager Rachel Walker saw Chicago's Ballet 5-8 perform at the Lila Cockrell Theater and was impressed by the issues they took on. That's part of the reason why I joined this company is because I'm somebody who doesn't want to shy away from the hard things. After two years dancing professionally with the company, Walker is headed home to dance in a ballet about sex trafficking. I think many people are aware of sex trafficking, but they kind of just brush it off as like, this doesn't really apply to me. Executive Director Lauren Diaz says every city where they perform, they partner with a local organization and donate part of their proceeds. In San Antonio, that organization is Ransomed Life, which serves exploited children and offers educational community trainings about the prevalence of trafficking. It's happening in every corner of San Antonio. It's happening in Bernie, Texas. It's happening in New Braunfels, Texas. Communications Director April Molina says people need to know what trafficking looks like and how to report it. There are predators in New Jersey reaching girls here in San Antonio. The common denominator with trafficking is the phone. It's online. A reality that's given 19 year old Walker a true sense of purpose. We're presenting an issue that is so downplayed, I guess, in our society. There will only be one show here downtown San Antonio at the Lila Cockrell Theater on November 6th. The Ransom Life staff will be here if you come and you can ask them any questions you have about trafficking or book a training session for your workplace or your church. We have all the information on KSAT.com. Reporting downtown, Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. New at six, it is encouraging. The number of COVID-19 hospitalizations continues to decline in our region. But for those with significant symptoms, those numbers don't matter. Treatment that keeps them out of the ICU, however, does. For those patients, staying off of a ventilator is crucial. And now, as Ursula Perry shows us, a new study suggests that a full dose of blood thinner may be a ticket to recovery. When a patient's lungs are failing due to COVID and doctors are out of options, mechanical ventilation is the last resort. Researchers at the University of Pittsburgh, though, have identified a possible treatment for patients who are moderately sick with COVID. The therapy focuses on clots that are thought to form in the large and small vessels of the lungs. The hypothesis was that if we 
uh, gave medicines to prevent clot formation, we might improve outcomes or improve organ functions. In two trials involving 3,300 hospitalized patients, doctors gave patients either a low dose or one full dose of heparin. Heparin is well known as a blood thinner. Uh, but heparin also has anti-inflammatory properties. What we do know is that patients who were moderately ill, so sick enough to be in the hospital but not in the ICU, when started on heparin, were less likely to require ICU level of care and less likely to die. In fact, researchers say there is a 99% probability that a full dose of heparin reduces the chance that moderately ill patients will die or will need a ventilator as compared to patients who received a low dose. Researchers say while heparin did have an impact on those who were moderately ill with COVID-19, it did not help those that were already critically ill. The results of this study mean that in the future, probably a full dose of heparin is going to be used as standard care for COVID. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Beautiful way to oh, start yeah. a new week. It what is, a great weekend, oh, too. Feeling like fall, Adam. And it's something else. I mean, just a fantastic weekend if you love this fall-like weather. I know a lot of people have been looking forward to it, and it sure delivered. 49 earlier this morning, then a high temperature of 77. Both well below average, but especially that morning low of 49 was just four degrees shy of the record low for today, set back in 1903. Look at the readings now, by and large, 70s. Bandera, 74. 72 in Holotus, New Braunfels right now at 75 degrees, and we do get into the 80s farther to the southwest of San Antonio. As we go through the night, gradual drop through the 60s, comfortable in a lack of humidity, but this fall weather isn't gonna last forever. We'll talk about the return of humidity and higher temperatures coming up. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda, brought to you by Toyota. Building an ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain and wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the sugar skull's forehead. It's a sweet thing to do. We speak with a Haitian doctor who specializes in spreading the word about the need to help the Haitian population. He talks about the violence they've seen for so many years and the change he would like to see happen in order to make a difference internationally. Want to make a clarification here. One of these two men will be the next state representative for District 118, Republican John Lujan or Democrat Frank Ramirez. We mistakenly called him Frank Daniels earlier in the show. It's Frank Ramirez, who's the Democratic candidate. They were the top two vote getters in the special election runoff set for November 2nd. Early voting began today. It runs through next Friday. You can see the sample ballot for this race, along with all the races happening that day on KSAT.com. Stop us if this sounds familiar. Some major backups <laughs> continuing on I-35 this evening. Yeah, Samuel King joins us now with the very latest. Sam, do you just like leave your camera there basically the whole time? Like, you yes. know, you know 35 just, is going to be a mess. Right. We, at least one camera view of 35 at all times. There you we go. Do these segments. This is 35 at Evans. The good news things. Good news is. Things are slowly improving, but you still see some slowdowns there. And we'll show you this on the map as we head over here to uh, the larger screen so you can get a good idea of what's going on. A lot of traffic in both directions. So let's take a look at an updated travel time now. 22 minutes heading southbound, but 41 minutes northbound 
from Loop 410 to New Braunfels this evening. It's now up to 43 minutes, so you are still seeing those delays on the northeast side this evening. Also have some delays here on State Highway 151. Getting a little bit better right now, but it'll still take you 10 minutes to get from Loop 410 to 1604 and Alamo Ranch Parkway on 151. Five minutes going the other direction, so watch out for that, particularly as you get closer to SeaWorld in 1604. I mentioned this at five. This is National Teen Safe Driving Week, so some reminders from the San Antonio Municipal Court. Remember, uh, remind your teens not to have cell phones in the car, discourage passengers if they can help it, and no speeding. And on that cell phone thing, if your driver is under 18, they're not allowed to have cell phones in the vehicle while they're driving, or no, no cell phones while driving, so watch out for that. But again, this is at 35. At Evans this evening, we'll continue to watch things throughout the hour, guys. As a father of a couple teen drivers, <laughs> oh boy. I wholeheartedly you agree with all those steps. All of that. Yes. All right. <laughs> Sky 12 look, flying high over the McNay Art Museum this evening. Beautiful pieces of art down there. And this day, it's kind of a work of art in itself, right? I mean, these stretches of weather we've had, picture perfect. It's a good way to put it, work of art, yeah, right? Nature's that? beauty, feeling good. <laughs> along, along with these lovely hand motions. I'm just doing, you know, <laughs> I don't need to talk. I'm just, you know, making these different, you know. That caught my eye over there. It did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, oh. chef's kiss for this yes. forecast. We always have to give it the French <laughs> yes. accent for that. For whatever exactly. reason, I would have no clue. We just... We always do. Okay, <laughs> we're going to move on here. Another pleasant night ahead of us. Not as cool as previous nights, but if you like to have your window open when you sleep, go ahead, go for it again tonight. But remember, mold and ragweed are out there. Humidity soon increases. You'll gradually notice it throughout the day tomorrow and especially Wednesday. And temperatures back in the 80s. Back in the 80s again after three days in a row of 70s. We'll be back in the 80s tomorrow. Let's talk temperatures first, how cool it's going to get, how temperatures will be changing in the days ahead. Right now across the state, mostly in the 70s. Beautiful fall like conditions out there. Marfa 77 along with Junction 75 in Amarillo, Houston now at 76. Locally, we do have some 80s, 83 Catula, 82 Carrizo Springs and Del Rio officially at 83. Those are the warmer exceptions, however. By early tomorrow morning, the map should look like this. About 60 degrees, give or take. Canyon Lake 59, Kerrville 57, 64 Catula, 60 Pleasanton, and about 58 here in San Antonio. So we're talking 57 Timberwood Park, Elmendorf at 60, and tomorrow morning in Holotus and Lake Hills, 59 degrees. By the afternoon, that's when we're back in the 80s, and I think we'll be about 82 downtown San Antonio, along with Lavernia, Elmendorf 83, but closer to 80 degrees off to the north. Timberwood Park 80 and Bernie at 78. Going forward here, the rest of this week, temperatures on the upswing. We're talking mid 80s for the middle of the week, upper 80s for the end of the week and through the weekend, about 87 to 88 for high temperatures Friday through Sunday. So big change compared to the, what we had over the weekend and even morning temperatures will be much higher as well. Dew points now, low to mid 50s, comfortable, pleasant outside. You don't feel that sticky, muggy feeling, however you will, I think, by tomorrow evening and especially on into Wednesday. Now, we're not talking oppressive humidity, just noticeable mugginess compared to this crisp air that we've had. So humidity rises throughout the week and by this weekend, we're looking at dew points upper 60s near 70, so pretty sticky at that point. So those are the changes that you'll be feeling. One thing we notice in the sky right now, some high thin clouds coming from Mexico and off the Pacific Ocean. Those high thin clouds should make for a lovely sunset this evening and a nice sunrise tomorrow morning. So if you're up at sunrise tomorrow morning, sunrise is around 7.30 a.m., definitely get outside, take a peek. Should be a colorful sunrise. As for active weather, nothing nearby. We've got this dip in the upper level flow, that upper level trough over the Rockies. We're talking Nevada and Utah. It's not coming our way. We're just getting this flow from the Pacific Ocean and just some of those mid and high level clouds for the next few days. Comfortable this evening, 64 at 10 o'clock midnight, closer to 60 tomorrow. We start the day at 58, then climb up to 82, partly cloudy conditions. And those mornings, they're back closer to 70 by the end of this week, and rain chances are minimal. All right, thank you, Adam. All right, finally, the UTSA Roadrunners are getting some national recognition for their undefeated season so Because far. they are nationally ranked in two separate polls after starting their season 7-0, and and they have a very good chance of going 8-0 and before their bye week. When we come back, what is the UTSA Roadrunners' response? 
Their head coach Jeff Trailer will tell us. And the Spurs are ready for opening night. Coming up. The UTSA Roadrunners continue to make school history for winning their seventh straight game to start their 2021 season. They've finally been rewarded with their first national rankings ever. Number 24 in AP College Football Poll, number 25 in the Coaches Poll. It's after their second shutout in school history on Saturday when they routed Rice 45 to nothing in front of over 27,500 fans in the Alamo Dome. Head coach Jeff Trailer called it the most complete game yet. Now it's about balance. We want to be humans. We, we want to have fun and <laughs> enjoy stuff too uh, but at the same time you know, how many hours are we spending on stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the losing a tech game you got to be very careful and uh, from monitoring your social media to media requests to everything we all all of us as players and coaches have to balance that fine line of how much we enjoy it versus how much we're studying losing a tech all right, that's because Louisiana Tech is their next opponent Saturday on the road at 6 p.m. where UTSA is six and a half point favorites. Well, the Texas Longhorns, their bye week could not come at a better time. They're allowing another team to come back and beat them this past Saturday. The latest, the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who were able to score 16 points in the fourth quarter to beat UT 32-24, dropped the Longhorns to 4-3 and three overall, 2-2 two and two in the Big 12. Once again, Texas built a 24-13 lead thanks to three touchdowns from Bijan Robinson, but for the second week in a row, gave up too many points in the second half. I don't think it's about our ability to coach. I don't think it's about our ability to, to execute and to play uh, because we've proven we're more than capable to do that. Now it's about our ability to sustain that uh, and to do it at, uh, at the critical moments, um, even after maybe there's some momentum swings that happen in the game. And so that's really been our focus and our mindset. And it doesn't get any easier. Up next, the Longhorns have to face the Baylor Bears in Waco on October the 30th. That kickoff time announced today, 11 a.m. live, right here on KSET 12. Just the opposite seems to be happening in Aggieland, where they're after two unexpected losses to Arkansas and Mississippi State. The Aggies have rebounded to defeat previously number one and number one ranked and undefeated Alabama for the first time in the SEC, and most recently the Tigers in Missouri. Now the Aggies came out on fire, scoring 21 points in the first quarter behind Zach Calzada's 148 yards and two touchdowns, and the Aggies' run game kicked into high gear. Isaiah Spiller had 168 yards on the ground with one touchdown. Devin Aitchane had two touchdowns of his own in the 35-14 victory. The Aggies looked themselves in the mirror and turned their season around. We definitely worked on our chemistry, just got back together, went back to, you know, coming, coming in the locker room all as one, goofing around all as one, starting practice, you know, with a whole bunch of energy. The Aggies host South Carolina this Saturday at Kyle Field at 630, where the Maroon and White are 20 and a half point favorites. Our San Antonio Spurs are now just two days away from tipping off their 2021-2022 regular season when they host the Orlando Magic on Wednesday. The Spurs got in another workout today as they prepare for opening night in the AT&T Center. Camp's over, preseason's over, and now it's uh, the real show. And, uh, you know, every day counts, uh, not just the game. So, you know, we're just coming together and getting ready to go out and have some fun. And it doesn't appear the Spurs and Lonnie Walker IV have come to an agreement on a rookie contract extension. That means he will become a restricted free agent this offseason. But the first game is on Wednesday and we'll be there live. All right. Right around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. There is no new deal yet, and the one currently on the books has already expired. So what is the latest between the city and the police union? Today in our KSAT Q&A, we have the president of the San Antonio Police Officers Association, Danny Diaz, joining us. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us back on this segment once again. Uh, so let's talk about where things stand right now. These negotiations have been ongoing for months. The contract expired the end of last month. So what is the sticking point right now? What's what's really got both sides wrangling? Well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, and as far as the contract's concerned, uh, you know, we, we've been dealing with the the, uh, the language on the discipline. Uh, we've been working hard uh, to make sure that that the uh, the contract is, is fair. Uh, as, as I've mentioned before and all along since I've taken over this presidency, is what we're looking for is due process and, and a fair contract, uh, a contract that's not only uh, fair for the for the uh, 
for the officers and the city, but that it, we make sure we take care of the citizens of San Antonio. The discipline, obviously, something that the mayor brings up every time we ask him about uh, the police contract. Uh, it's something that you and I have talked about in the past on this very segment. Do you feel you're close? Do you feel you're close to a deal with the city? The mayor said the last time he was on and we talked to him about it, he thought that you that the city and the police officers were close. Yes, sir. I, I'll tell you, we've been close uh, for a long time now. Um, and in all actuality, in my opinion, this deal could have been done back March, April. Um, but of course, there are some things that needed to be discussed. Uh, the, the finer points, uh, as the mayor mentioned the last time, the legal ease uh, that the attorneys have to go through and make sure that the wording is 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 done correctly. Uh, the, look, the idea is is here is is to get it done right. This way, uh, both sides can can move on, and uh, there there are tons of other things to work with and work on. Uh, we are close, uh, closer than we have been. Uh, from from its inception uh, of, of this bargaining session. So uh, uh, he's absolutely right. Uh, we are close and we're set to go back to the table tomorrow. So we'll see what transpires uh, there and then we'll we'll move on. You know, you mentioned the legalese, and I know there are so many specifics in a contract that we cannot dissect in a couple of minutes here. But I keep going back to uh, the last municipal election, that Prop B election that really took focus, took aim at police accountability. Of course, it failed, but it was so close. So is that something that the union is keeping in mind? I mean, are we going to see actual changes made in terms of some common ground, some uh, giving on the police union's behalf to try to meet some of these goals that the city has and, and vice versa, in your opinion? So, Myra, I'll tell you that that we've come a long way in meeting some of those goals and have changed a lot. Um, you know, some some individuals seem to think that it's not enough. Um, but I will tell you from, from our standpoint, we've moved further than we've ever moved before. Uh, we have looked at what the activists were, were uh, uh, stating in that Proposition B. We've looked at what the citizens have been stating. Uh, but, but bottom line is, is you know, there, there's, it's, it's labor, right? And in labor, uh, we need to make sure that our workers are taken care of. Uh, in the same mindset is we have to look at it this way what's fair um, and, and in due process, all we're asking for is what every other citizen gets, uh, which is due process. If if we went the way that some individuals would like for it to go, uh, we wouldn't have that due process and it'd be 100% the city side. Um, no one's perfect, uh, mistakes are made. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, Steve, uh, we don't want bad officers here. I don't think you'll find any officer on the San Antonio Police Department or a member of this union that wants a bad officer here because it makes the rest of them look bad. Uh, so we have uh, made some changes uh, and, and hopefully tomorrow we can get past that and, and uh, you and, and the citizens will see what uh, how far we've come. As the president of the San Antonio Police Officers Association, obviously you take the temperature of your rank and file. Where are they right now? Are they frustrated that this thing isn't done yet? I mean, are they frustrated that they think too much has already been given up and the city is is being unreasonable? I mean, do you have a good temperature on where on where your members are right now? Well, as we talked about before, Steve, I will tell you that morale is at an all time low. Uh, I, I know some individuals don't want to hear that, uh, but you know, from uh, from the start of of my pre presidency on February first. Uh, you will look at the um, the what's been happening, right? Um, the, the change of what act, activists, um, uh, individuals out in the community that want us to make. Um, but some of those changes are done by individuals that have never done this job, don't know what it takes. And sometimes the uh, the, the forgotten thought here is is that the members of the San Antonio Police Officers Association and San Antonio Police Department took an oath. Uh, to uphold the laws that have been put in place, state, local, federal. Uh, and those are the things we have to work with, um, not just things that individuals um, want as far as change is concerned. Uh, we've looked at all of those things and made uh, changes to what the city is asking for. Um, also, the, the, uh, 
the, the idea of, of getting officers uh, what they need for their families, uh, th that's, that's something that we need to look at also. Uh, if you look up the road to Austin, uh, they, ha they have a proposition that's about to start and what they're asking for is more officers because they're very close to 300 short, if I'm not mistaken, and I might be off on those numbers. Um, and they're getting pushed back just for asking for more officers. Um, that's not what we want here. Uh, we want people to come and work here in the city of San Antonio and for this department. It's a good place to be. It's a good place to work and it's a great place to live. Uh, but you have to have those things in place, uh, a contract, uh, have the backing by the city and, and, and the citizens. And a lot of times, you know, the officers feel like they just keep getting punched in the mouth uh, by by certain individuals because they continue to hammer us uh, with, um, you know, we're just bad officers and um, that's it. And that's that's so far from the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have good people working here. Danny, uh, before we let you go here, I want to completely change this conversation. We said that we were happy to see you when we started this segment and we mean it because we know it has been a rough month or so for you and your family. You're recovering from COVID-19. So talk about what you went through and how you're doing now. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a process. Uh, it, it, it's been a week. Uh, I went back to work last week. Uh, I tell you, I get real tired real easy. Um, unlike it's ever been, I've never gone through that before. Um, I don't wish this on anyone. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's not something that uh, anyone should go through. Uh, and I hope that the, the, the COVID, as far as other people uh, contracting it, um, slows down and we continue to go on, on the downhill slide. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to see a family member, um, it, you know, you're, you're helpless to help them. And, and that's, that's tough. Uh, I can't imagine how um, other families uh, have dealt with it especially when they've had a loved one that has lost a life. Um, it's, it's difficult. So uh, my prayers to everyone that has had COVID, uh, the ones that have it currently, and my prayers to the families that have lost uh, a family member due to that, that illness. Um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's not an easy thing. Were you vaccinated, Danny? Yes, sir, I was. Yeah, yeah. and you got it anyway. Wow. Bat battling COVID and negotiating a contract. You certainly have your hands full. So I appreciate you taking time for us as you always do, Danny. Thank you so much. Thank you all very much. Thank all you right. for having me. You take care. We'll be right back. Welcome back to some reminders about construction on Loop 1604. Continuing, we'll have these alternating lane closures in both directions between I-10 and Bandera Road. It kicks off at 9 uh, this evening, runs through October 23rd. For now, we'll see if that gets extended again. Also, some overnight lane closures on 1604 between 281 and Stone Oak Parkway. Also beginning at 9, running till 5 a.m., doing some signage installation along that stretch of roadway. Uh, looking at the travel time now, still some delays uh, on both parts of there. Uh, 28 minutes now heading westbound from 281 to Bandera. Only 14 minutes uh, on the other side, so watch out for that and also 1604 the rest of the stretch on the west side looking uh, pretty good right now. Do have a crash reported here right at 281 and uh, loop 410 so you're down to 30 uh, miles per hour there. I believe that crash is uh, on the ramp there so watch out for that if you're uh, heading close to the airport or leaving the airport uh, this evening. Finally once you get downtown things have really cleared out. This is I-10 at the Y looking fine guys this evening. All right, thanks, Samuel. Look outside with live camp. Beautiful Monday following a beautiful weekend, but we know things are bound to change. Adam. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this can't stick around forever this time of year, and our humidity is going to be rebounding. Temperatures will be on the rise as well. This evening, though, another beautiful one. You can open the windows, let the fresh air in if you want to. 75 degrees out there right now by 8 o'clock, 68, 10 o'clock, 64. And tomorrow, I think many of us will be in the upper 50s to start the day. But the changes are just around the corner. You're going to feel them. I'm talking about all of them in just a few minutes. All right, so the weather situation, beautiful, perfect. Not going to stay this way. Yeah. No, it came at the right time over the weekend. It was good fall weather over the weekend. Temperatures were well below average. We had some mornings in the 40s and then afternoons for the past three days now.
We're in the 70s. Today we topped out at 77 after a morning low of 49 degrees. Obviously both of those well below average, but actually that morning low only four degrees shy of the record low today. 84 was the high in Del Rio, 86 Catula and Carrizo Springs. Those were the warmer exceptions, but give it a few days and we're all going to be there well into the 80s. So let's talk about our beautiful sunset this evening. I love it. Get outside, take advantage of this sunset. Sunset officially now at 7 p.m. Yes, 7 p.m. sunset and with those cirrus clouds, it's going to be looking even better. 75 degrees now, dew point of 52. So not too sticky or muggy outside. Actually, it feels fantastic out there with that lack of humidity. Dew points in the 50s. Remember, once they hit that critical 60 degree mark, that's when you start to feel that stickiness outside. We're going to be close to it tomorrow, but especially there by Wednesday and dew points are only going to be rising through the remainder of the week and on into the upcoming weekend. And by the weekend, we could have dew points upper 60s near 70. So you're going to feel the increase in the humidity. It's not immediate, but by Wednesday morning, it's definitely going to be in place. You'll notice a return of some stickiness out there. Randolph now at 76, 72 Comfort, 77 Castroville for the most part. 70s with the exception of Stinson now at 80 degrees, Catula at 83 and Del Rio 83 as well. But 70 Fredericksburg and Rock Springs feeling good outside this evening. You can enjoy your outdoor activities and if you have any yard work, you don't sweat as much. That's a nice thing. And by tomorrow morning, we'll be in the upper 50s for some of us. Canyon Lake 59, Kerrville 57. Meanwhile, about 62 Carrizo Springs, but a comfortable 59 in Beeville and Stone Oak about 58, Timberwood Park 57, Elmendorf 60. Still below average tomorrow morning, close to the average, but a slightly below here in town. And then those morning temperatures with the return of humidity, they're back up. That's the thing. Once that moisture gets back in our air, the wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, and we have that humidity. It prevents our temperatures from falling off very much at night. So we'll be looking at readings well into the 60s in the mornings ahead, even near 70 by the weekend. There's a look at that stream of moisture coming off the Pacific, just some high clouds, but those are the clouds that sometimes lead to beautiful sunrises and sunsets. So I think we'll have a pretty good sunset this evening and another nice sunrise tomorrow morning. Otherwise, no real active weather around us. We just have this big upper level low pressure system north of Las Vegas near Salt Lake City. That's where things are getting stirred up right now, but it's not going to head our way. It's actually moving away from us to the northeast of its current location. So pretty quiet around here. Tomorrow we start the day at 58 degrees, partly cloudy, 82 by the afternoon, southeasterly breeze at 10 to 15. And just as we go through the week, morning temperatures and afternoon temperatures slowly baby step their way upward with right now what looks like very minimal, little to none rain chances. All right, thanks, Adam. In case you missed it, coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. A police officer is recovering and one man is in jail following a chase that began in Castle Hills. Castle Hills police say they were trying to arrest a man for suspicion of human trafficking of a child. During that chase, the man crashed his vehicle into a police unit and then took off running. The Biden administration has formally now asked the Supreme Court of the United States to halt the Texas law that makes abortions illegal once a fetal heartbeat is detected. That's usually at about six weeks into the pregnancy. Today, Biden's Justice Department asked the high court to lift an order imposed by a federal appeals court that has allowed this law to continue to be enforced. The DOJ says the heartbeat law defies the Supreme Court's previous decisions on abortion rights by restricting abortions before many women even know they're pregnant. Bear County Medical Examiner identifying a man who was shot and killed yesterday is 16-year-old Anthony Vic Rodriguez. According to San Antonio police, he was shot during an argument. I'd investigators say a man called for help, claiming two men he was driving started fighting, pulled out guns and shot at each other. Rodriguez pronounced dead at the scene at last check. No one has been arrested. Colin Powell, a soldier turned statesman, made history on many fronts. The first African-American and youngest chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and later the first African-American Secretary of State. So I've always felt strongly that you should try to solve conflicts in this world through negotiations, through diplomacy. Anytime we can solve the problem that way and not use force and satisfy our objectives, let's push for that.
If you're behind on your water bill and haven't made arrangements with the utility to get caught up, you could get disconnected. San Antonio Water System says it will resume disconnections starting tomorrow. Saws is telling customers to set up payment plans to keep that from happening. Most delinquent accounts have been automatically enrolled in four year payment plans. But if you have not, there is still time to set up a payment or apply for financial assistance. You can find more information on our website at ksat.com. All right, they're doing some pavement work on Loop 410 on the east side, so there's going to be some closures northbound from Houston Street to I-10 and southbound from Ben Zingelman to Houston. That's about a two-mile stretch there. That begins at the top of the hour here, so very shortly some pavement operations there, so watch out for some lane closures in that area. Also still watching a crash near the airport on 281 South near Loop 410, and here's a look at 35. Some traffic there, but flowing well this evening, Adam. And Sam, very comfortable this evening. Temperatures gradually falling through the 60s. Tomorrow morning, upper 50s. But temperatures on the rise the rest of this week. And that humidity, you'll really be feeling it again as we get into Wednesday. It won't be oppressive, but noticeable humidity by midweek. Uh, we knew it was going to come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks, Adam. And thanks for watching the news at 6. See you back here on the Night Beat at 10.